All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Webflow live stream. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me for episode 154. Uh, as you can tell, I'm back at the Webflow headquarters in the live streaming studio. Super awesome. Um, yeah, so what do we do on these live streams? Usually we, we do some uh, Webflow tutorials, give you some tips and tricks on how to do something advanced to do some stuff that are basic. But it's mainly to connect with you, the Webflow community, and also give you some insights about how the Webflow team operates and what life is like here at Webflow. And as you can see, I have two special guests with, he, uh, with me here today, uh, Leonard and Nathan. They are managers of the engineering team. And uh, before I in, uh, ask, them, uh, ask them about how they build Webflow, you know, um, I'm going to just say hi to everyone in the live chat room. Uh, who's in here today? And where are you, where are you all from? Yeah, where are you from? Let's see here. Brandon's the first one in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon, for being here. Uh, let's see. Danny from Arizona. Nice. Norfolk, UK. All around the world. Christian, where are you from? Yeah, Anna's part of the QA team. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, anyone else? Anyone? Let me. I need to check Facebook too. Let me go to Facebook real quick and see if anyone is is there right now. Is it working? I hope so. there it is. Yes, it's working. All right, Denver, Colorado, Blake. What's up from our Facebook group? Thank you so much for being here. Chicago. Joseph Bear, hey Joseph from London. Yeah, Joseph is doing a lot of um, Webflow interaction tutorials on his own YouTube channel. Really cool. I had him on the uh, on a previous stream, and he showed us how he built um, some crazy hover effects. But yeah, all right. Well, thank cool. you everyone for for being here. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So what we're going to be learning today is um, what it really takes to build the future of web and to democratize it. There's so many engineers we have on the team that are doing some awesome things. And, you know, to me, it's it's just magic. Like, I don't know how they do the things they do with the codings and in the, in the programmings and the, the hibbity bobbity whatever. I don't know, but it's... It's that's about so right. <laughs> bibbity bobbity boo that's, Yeah. That's just go to a computer. Yeah. bibbity bobbity <laughs> And Webflow, done. Done. <laughs> yeah, basically. And so besides that, also learn what it takes to become a Webflow engineer. You know, what um, what these two managers are looking for. Now, let's just get right into it. So again, we have Leonard and Nathan. I'll start with you, Nathan. Um, what made you, I, I looked into your LinkedIn profile, you know, before the stream, and I was trying to find out how did you get here? What was your path to Webflow? And I saw that you started as a lifeguard. Yep. So how, why did you leave the lifeguarding world to go into the tech industry? Yeah, definitely. First, I just want to give a shout out to Corey, who's from Des Moines. That's where I grew up. Thanks for being here, Corey, um, to actually answer your question now. Um, so lifeguarding was kind of um, a summer job uh, throughout high school and college. And it was just, you know, it's just your first job. Um, but I was really, I was going to school um, to be a doctor. Uh, I was studying biology, doing pre -med, doing the pre-med thing, um, thinking that healthcare was where I wanted to go. Um, but after some experiences actually working in the industry a little bit, um, I found out that it wasn't for me. Um, but thankfully, um, I had started programming when I was pretty young. Um, technology was always a big thing for me. Um, I loved computers, all different kinds, uh, building computers, program programming computers, all those kind of things. Um, so one thing led to another, did uh, a startup in college, um, fell in love with the startup world, um, and then ended up here, so. Huh, okay, well, there's, there's a lot of things you, like, lost over there. <laughs> okay, so you went into biology, and it kind of makes sense because biology, you're trying to figure out how things work, yeah, you definitely. know? And that makes sense for programming and, and building computers. But, like, what about the, that, that industry that made you go, Nah, this is not for me, because you glossed over that one. I mean, there was like a number of different things, but seeing the the biggest thing that stood out to me was just asking doctors, like, do you think it's a good idea for somebody to go into medicine in 2014? Um, the number of no's I got to that was startling. Um, huh. So that was a big thing. Um, seeing, you know, the bureaucracy and the red tape, that's a common thing that people are afraid of in the medical industry, and that was obviously part of it, too. Um, but it was 
a lot of it was just talking to doctors and getting many negative experiences. I mean, of course, there were lots of positive ones. You see life-changing things. Um, you see some crazy interesting things. I remember uh, shadowing an orthopedic surgeon, and he had, like, I, I think they're called, like, endoscopic instruments, like, in somebody's knee, just, like, grinding away and seeing, like, just water and yeah. bone fragments just flying out across the room. It was, like, it was violent almost. How um, could you want, not want to pursue that? Yeah, exactly. That sounds sounds um, good. So, I mean, there's definitely <laughs> positives, but... Um, one thing led to another, and <clears throat> the path worked out pretty well. So okay, yeah, yeah. I think you get the same answer with lawyers too. Yeah, they're like no, saturated, don't do it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Student, or they want to student debt, loan debt. Well, and my lawyer friends are now working ninety hours a week, which is something that at Webflow we are absolutely not doing. Which is we advocate uh, for one hundred eighty hours. Exactly, a week. ninety is not <laughs> oh enough. No, I okay. I can't tell you the last time that I worked more than forty hours in a week. It's been a very long time. That is important awesome. to us. Very important to us. Yeah. So, um, uh, Leonard, how did you um, s get started into the tech industry? I, I'm in the tech industry? No? Well, you kind of. I mean, Webflow is, is tech. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I got, I mean, I've been programming since I was young as well. I think I, I can't quite remember. I was like 11 or 12 when I first started picking that up. Um, but for me, I had a sort of a different direction uh, into the industry just because, I uh, was always good at, at like art and programming, so I enjoyed like pursuing both. And it was really hard to figure out where I fit because the tech, you know, the tech world doesn't like. There's no programs for that. I mean, they do have them now. Um, they're yeah. really great, but um, there wasn't like an MIT Media Lab when I was searching for colleges and stuff like that. Oh. And uh, so I wandered for a bit, and you know, was in a band for a while, and then realized I need to go to college. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I ended up just you know getting all my cores done and and uh, studied computer science. Um, but I really wasn't happy with the program. Um, it was a, more of a math degree than it was like a, an experience engineering degree. And I really wanted to uh, learn how to like engineer experiences. That was my thing. Like I could always pick up coding, um, but I wanted to just understand that more. So I ended up going into fine art, um, which huh. is literally lo like the, the entire, the entire thing is about how to create experiences that move people. And um, so during that time I was contracting uh, and just, you know, keeping my technical chops up while also learning painting and drawing and sort of figured out that merging those two worlds was, was a, a rare thing that I had and um, kind of doubled down on it since then. And now I'm a manager, so that's, that's <laughs> great. No, no, but that's how I got into it, yeah. That makes sense, uh, taking the art and, and the te technical sides and putting it together, and that's basically the whole, that's user experience right there. Yeah, yeah. And having, always, always loved it, yeah. That's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so, uh, Nathan, you mentioned that uh, you, that's your, your path into Webflow, mm -hmm. and back in 2014, that's when you first started at Webflow. Yes. And, and that was just when, was that the beginning of 2014 or towards the end? It was in the middle of 2014, yeah. Yeah, so Webflow was about, what, like eight months old at that time? I know. Um, something like that. Like, uh, I think a little over a year, but still yeah. quite young. Yeah, very young. And so um, how did you get into, did like Vlad like contact you or like how did you get into Webflow? Yeah, so there's, um, there's a website in the tech community called Hacker News. Um, and it has a monthly uh, who's hiring and who wants to be hired post. Um, lots of YC companies, for example, uh, will post there and also many other tech companies. Um, but in 2014, I had uh, posted on who wants to be hired. Um, I said I wanted to be hired and uh, the CTO Bryant uh, reached out to me. Um, we sent a few emails back and forth. We had a video call. Um, I flew out to San Francisco. Um, I got an offer and then a month later, I moved out to San Francisco and it all worked. Nice, nice. So, uh, what was your first project here at Webflow? Like, what did you have to help build? Yeah, so um, longtime Webflow users might remember that um, the dashboard used to look very different. Um, <laughs> so, there wasn't the discover section, um, site settings, and everything about the dashboard. It just was very, very different. Um, so, the first thing that I was working on was rebuilding the dashboard uh, to how it looks today, um, adding out the discover section, um, public site profiles, um, and those kind of things. Um, so that was the first few months here. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, for everyone in the live chat room, if you have a question for uh, Leonard and Nathan, uh, go ahead and post it in the live chat room, and we'll ask it. Um, let's see here. I see something from Efren. It says, hi, guys. I'm a software developer, but new to Webflow, but really enjoy using it. Great tool to bridge the gap between a professional programmer and a lay web developer. Okay, not really a question. but. <laughs> 
um, I have a comment about this one. Um, so whenever I go ahead and uh, go and present Webflow to people who are who, who've never heard of Webflow, right? And especially if they know of developers or are a developer themselves, they kind of look at Webflow as just another WYSIWYG, mm. okay? And then they say stuff like, uh, often I get a question of, so what's going to happen to the developers' jobs? Are like you you taking us a away from having any jobs? So how do you respond to that? Anyone? Um, I I think we both could respond to that. But you go ahead first. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean I think there's always going to be developers' jobs. Um, yeah. There's always <laughs> layers lower in the stack um, that always uh, need people to work on. Um, we invent a new abstraction, so we go from assembly to C, and blah, blah, blah. Um, there's still people who write assembly day to day, mm -hmm. um, if you're working on a Linux kernel, for example. Um, so I, I think it's just one more layer of uh, uh, computer interactions on top of where we're currently at. Um, so I don't think that anybody's job is uh, at risk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, it's interesting because in, you know, in engineering, you'll solve a problem, and the beautiful part of engineering, like open source design and all that stuff is, once you've solved a problem, it's solved, and then someone else can go and you know include in their whatever problem they're solving. They're just solving bigger and bigger problems, and um, you can start to see themes of these problems that are solved. And we uh, focus on the big themes first, right? But there's always going to be way more problems than we could probably create visual tooling on top of, yeah. and um, and also creating the visual tooling itself. Um, I think at some point we could probably build abstractions to, I mean, we, we will build abstractions to actually make that happen so oh, yeah. the programmer doesn't need to do that. But there's usually going to be some level of program that's going to be required because um, there's just so many problems to solve. I mean, who knows what the next big, you know, machine learning problem will happen in the next 10 years that, you know, yeah. visual tooling may not be able to address immediately. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The, it's the, more it's more about empowering even exactly. programmers to use Webflow. They don't so they don't have to deal with the same problems they deal with with cutting code. So they yeah. can focus on more lower level problems too. I, I can design a website, do the design portion much <coughs> faster in Webflow than I could if I had to manually do the CSS. Um, mm. So even yep. for that, it still is yep wonderful. Yeah, it's even yeah, so it'll even enhance developers' workflows versus putting anyone out of a job. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many developers really like? Hand coding like a, a Photoshop or a Figma or or some sort of static mock from from static to actual live code. You know, like how many people really like that whole process? Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's what I that's what I tell those people who who ask me like, oh, what about developers' jobs? And so it's like, there's just like you said, there's more bigger problems to solve than just hey, take this static mock and make it real. Yep. You know, and Webflow helps streamline that. All right. Um, again, if let's see here. Uh, B Design Square is asking, or does Webflow have plans to create? Oh, okay, so that's a feature question. Um, <laughs> native des desktop application. Um, that's uh, if you go back to uh, Vlad's live Q and A. We had uh, uh, from last quarter. He answers that. But um, if you have any questions about uh, Webflow engineering or what's life like here working at Webflow, go ahead and ask those. Um, let's see here. So, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So, Leonard. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so, uh, Nathan uh, was contacted by Bryant to get into Webflow. Mm -hmm. When did you start at Webflow, and, and like, how was that process like to get in? Did uh, Bryant contact you, or? Uh, no, no. Uh, it was about three years ago. Um, I had written a React audio component that, that I was like sharing on Twitter, and um, Vlad actually reached out and was like, hey, what's, uh, what's going on with your work situation? <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, so Vlad pretty much uh, poaches everyone from Twitter. He's a, he's a He's a Twitter master. There's your first tip. Yeah, there's your first <laughs> tip. If you want to work here, get on Twitter. And um, I actually wasn't looking for a full-time job at the time. I was, I was contracting. I was perfectly happy doing my own thing. Um, and then this really excited CEO sort of pinged me, and I was like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then he, then he made me fall in love with him. He's a oh. total jerk. Because <laughs> it was just too good of a fit, and we started chatting in private. And he actually, came, I live in Las Vegas, and he came out to Vegas for, um, uh, for not to for me personally. <laughs> oh, okay. He, he happened to be in Vegas with his wife for like an anniversary, and I was like, oh, I don't want to bother you. But he ended up we ended up having coffee, like you know, for a little bit, and um, just so really hit it off. Interrupted his whole anniversary I did. trip. I, I purposefully <laughs> tried to get in the way. Um, no. 
But he, uh, yeah, and we just really hit it off, just total alignment on, like, vision and values and, and all these different things. And it, it just was like, well, I guess I, I have to do this because it was just too good of a fit. So, so the alignment of vision and values, you know, uh, tell me, like, what was, what was yours and how did, it, how did Vlad's align? Well, you know, well, for one, like, I've always wanted to work on a product like Photoshop. Like, I, I love UI engineering. I love building visual abstractions. And I also, like, lo love the idea of supporting people and empowering people. And Vlad is all about that. Like, I, I'm fascinated with software like 3D, you know, programs like uh, Maya Max, all these different things for making movies. I, I thought yeah. I wanted to go into movies, um, not an actor as a, as a, <laughs> as a 3D artist. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I had learned a lot of those, to a lot of that tooling, and I, I just I just loved it. And that's kind of also inspired me to become a programmer because I wanted to build things like that. And I thought Webflow just fit. Um, right in that place where I was like, oh, because I had most of my experience in web engineering, and uh, here, here was a, a 3D S Max like tool, but for the web, or like a Unity like tool for the web, and I was like, this is awesome. Like, <laughs> so the vision of the product itself was great, and the Brett Victor sort of feeling to it, it was just, you know, it's, it's very addictive and alluring and <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's why. Yeah. So it matched. Awesome. Um, so Leonard, you you start at Webflow at 2014. Um, uh, and you you were doing back end engineering, right? And so, what was that like five years? About five years, yeah. Whew, five years. Mm -hmm. So now you're the back end engineering manager. Mm -hmm. Like, how um, how was dealing with the constant change of the Webflow platform and the rapidly growing team to becoming a manager of this team? Like, how has that uh, process or experience been like? Yeah, you know, it's it's been interesting growing from six to 106. Six. Um, so adding just about 100 people. Yep. Um, we've seen lots of change over that period of time. Um, lots of it having to do with processes. Um, the things that work for six no longer work for 16, no longer work for 50. And then at 100, it's a whole other, uh, whole other thing. Um, so it's just been being cognizant that those kind of changes are necessary and um, doing our best to make everybody feel good about them and figure out what is going to work as we continue to grow. Yeah. Yeah, and for yeah. context, the engineering team's around 55, 50-ish yep. people now. And it will be growing more, so uh, you know, it's a lot more. It's like every week there's someone new. There is. I know. I was I was out there going like, who's this person? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yep. yeah. Well, not like that. You you didn't go up to that person like, who who's this person? No, no. no I, I went behind their back and asked everyone else. Okay. No. <laughs> no, it turns out they're a different department, and I now know who they are, and I feel much more comfortable about the whole situation. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Looks like Andrew Fied had a question. Does Webflow use a SQL or NoSQL database on its backend? Yes. Um, I can answer that one. Uh, we primarily use NoSQL databases. Um, Mongo specifically, um, it's had its issues in the past. It's working pretty well for us these days. Um, there are places where using SQL would be nice, but um, Mongo scales pretty well, and it's been good to use. See, all that, I, I don't, un <laughs> Mong Mongoose, what? I, yeah, yep. as, as a designer, I'm like, thank you for, <laughs> for doing the things. Yes. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Bodhi's asking, how many engineers are there that work on your teams and how, many, how are things changing to allow features to be released sooner to the public? Uh, I think we answered the, the first one, first part of that question, but you want to answer the second? Yeah, I'm happy to answer the second question, actually. That's because it's been top of mind and I've been working <laughs> a lot on it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we had around 50 engineers and, and uh, I brought on uh, a team of, I was the first engineering manager at Webflow. And then um, I was managing 35 people, and that was clearly unsustainable. <laughs> so I brought on a team of engineering managers, which included Nathan. He was one of the first ones. And um, uh, so basically, our, we've, we've divided our teams into domain teams that focus on like features within a certain you know concern of, of our product, right? So like Dynamo would be our CMS, and, and uh, e-commerce is e-commerce. And so we have teams based on those sort of domains. Um, and uh, so now with the engineering manager line, line in place, uh, we have uh, you know, an agile process that we follow and um, we have certain you know, key objectives that we try and go after and, and uh, the teams themselves you know, pursue these, these larger picture things that align to you know, releasing various features. And, and a team makeup is, um, is there's a product 
manager who drives the roadmap for that particular team. There's an engineering manager who's, who is basically assists the product manager to make sure that the how is uh, implemented well, right? So that mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, make sure the workflow is, uh, the work is flowing properly and that, um, you know, the engineers know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But our teams are cross collaborative. So we also have product designers on our team. So they work with the engineers, engineers work with them. Uh, we have QA specialists on the teams. And it's, it's really, we try and make them as autonomous as we can, yeah. um, but align them to larger picture things. Um, but the features for that particular question do come through um, uh, the product managers and the teams do focus on trying to build smaller and deliver sooner uh, and iterate in that fashion. So, hmm. nice. Uh, it looks see. like Greg also had a good question. Yeah, go for it. Um, okay. How do uh, seemingly goofy or off the wall ideas get traction? Um, I think there's one good thing that we do that I push for really hard, um, and that was the notion of 10% time, mm -hmm. where yeah. um, in a given week you have. I mean, it started off as you know Friday afternoons, but because we're a remote team and that didn't work for some people, it's now just 10% of your time throughout the week as you see fit. Um, but it's work on whatever you want. Um, and I can't give any spoilers, but there have been a couple off the wall ideas that I've seen uh, mentioned yeah. in our 10% time Slack channel uh, that are pretty uh, goofy and off the wall that should probably result in some pretty cool things. Whose idea was it to put Comic Sans Easter egg into Webflow? I, that was there from the day I started. Oh. I'm assuming, well, it was Vlad Sergio Bryant. Um, oh, okay. Not exactly sure who, but. Yeah, if you haven't found it yet, uh, yeah, you can. It's our most useful feature. It is, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know the quick find was Lou. That was yes. a 10% Yeah, idea. that was a great 10% one. Yeah, that was a really great one. Not goofy at all, though. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> super useful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Al almost 16, great age to get into Webflow. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I mean, I remember getting into web design in GeoCities back in <laughs> when I was 14. Yep. You know? GeoCities. Yeah. Was it called, was it even web design back then? I, yeah, why not? Did you edit <laughs> that was HTML? more in the webmaster domain. Yes, yeah. yeah. webmaster. Oh my God, I haven't heard that in a long time. Yep. It did fall out of favor, didn't oh, it? Oh, very much. Yeah. Webmasters. <laughs> Game master or dungeon master. <laughs> we are playing D&D &D soon, right? Here. Oh, okay. Are you going to DM? Huh? <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, have a, la yeah, okay. I'll play the music. I have a health elf orc that I'd love to, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Leonard, uh, on your LinkedIn profile, uh, you say that you are hacking reality bit by beautiful bit. It really, it really shows uh, what you, what you really think about when it comes to user experiences, right? But um, since it's obvious that we're in a simulation already, like how can one really react or hack reality when there isn't one to begin with? You seen The Matrix? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't reality. I mean, but Neo hacked it somehow, right? Okay. So maybe it's all about trying to figure out how to get out of the Matrix. How to fly? <laughs> how to fly. How to fly right at the end of the movie. How to get super um, strength and all that stuff? Yeah, how to get super strength. I haven't actually looked at my LinkedIn profile, I think, in four years. <laughs> so <laughs> I probably should update <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that little section about myself. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, you, you both were talking about, um, keep, uh, talking about how your teams are streamlined and not not like overworking like more than mm. more than 40 hours you know mm -hmm. well you joked your team works 180 hours yeah and different day. teams one day 100, 180 hours a day a day yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how they hack oh. reality yeah exactly <laughs> and we have little time warps little okay little wormholes yeah no we don't no. we're as productive as 180 hours in a day but we only work at most eight so how do how do your teams stay that Productive and release all these features for, for for the Webflow community, but still like have um, you know some time to do ten percent uh, projects or 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 whatnot. Yeah, I think you know when teams are overworked, it's usually a failure in management, and so it's a matter of having incredibly clear expectations, uh, north stars, goals for the teams to pursue. Um, and then making sure those expectations and goals are prioritized properly because you don't want to waste any time, right? And when you're not wasting time, then you, you, know, you can get a lot done in a lot shorter period of time. Whereas, you know, if you were to pursue something that took five times longer, but it didn't get you the same outcome, then that's, that's a waste. And, you, you, you know, that's a failure on the person trying to create the roadmap for everybody. Yeah. 
Um, so we're just like really judicious about what we're working on, constantly reevaluating it, constantly questioning and, and saying, why is this valuable? How does this help our users? Um, and uh, pursuing only those things that are just like a clear, yes, this is it. This is well, and I, I think another thing that helps is taking an iterative approach to yeah. developing things to mm -hmm. where um, you release a small chunk yes. and you validate that this is actually the direction that we want to go. Yeah. So to your point about you know making sure that we're going the right direction is iter working iteratively allows us to actually yeah. do that. Failing early yes. and often and then learning. Like yeah. we, we, failing is great as long as you fail towards success. Like you just yeah. need to learn at every moment. Yeah. And um, that's, I mean, that's the only way I know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So while well, keeping people sane and healthy. Because balance, work-life balance here is, I know that's kind of a, I'm not sure. <laughs> cliche, yeah, cliche like. term anymore. But, um, you know, it is important to us that, that our team is healthy and they can sustain the pace at which they, you know, they work. Yep. Um, another thing we do that's really important is we optimize people to have un long, un uninterrupted stretches of, of, like, work time, like flow time. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of flow, hmm. but that's, um, you know, like the, the focused state flow. Hmm. Um, and engineers, when they context switch too much and stuff, that can really hamper their ability to produce. So we, as managers, we protect, you know, as, as much of that as we can. Like some meetings are unavoidable, but we really try and minimize them and um, make sure that they have all the time they need to be able to wrap up their day by 5 p.m. or whatever their schedule is. And yeah. uh, that's that's really important because sometimes if you're just constantly interrupting them, then you're not giving them the opportunity yeah. to produce. Lose so their train of thought. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we keep we keep the web flow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nelson. Yes. Exactly. It's exactly exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see if there's um, the web flow team really loves Lacroix. Yeah. Hashtag yes, not do. sponsored, but I'm drinking tap water, Wonder. San Francisco <laughs> tap water. Um, this is an ad <coughs> for it. It's good stuff. <laughs> Did you just do an ad or something? <laughs> um, <coughs> all right, let's see here. Any? Let me see here. Um, let me see here. Da, 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 da. I'm looking at the chat room right now. I have a uh, Ritesh is saying I have a question about jobs. Are you guys looking for a brand designer? Um, we, I think we are, but just go to our job yes, page. Yes, go to our job page. <laughs> Webflow.com <laughs> slash jobs. Uh, let me check our um, the Facebook page right now. Um, here we go. Yeah. Let's see. Anyone talking on Facebook? Usually not many people talking on Facebook. Nope. No one's talking there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, no. <laughs> what? Bodhi has a good question. Okay. Go for I, it. Uh, uh, have any of you seen the face of the voice of the Webflow tutorials before today, or has he been locked away in the bowels of Webflow? I think yeah. he's largely been locked away in the bowels of Webflow in the room that we're currently in. Yeah, the what room if, within what a room we're locked studio. in the bowels of Webflow and he's not, then that's, I mean, it could be the inverse, right? Huh. Yeah, I, I, I just met him today, and I was like... Is it first time? I, I was like... Eh. Really? That's you? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I wasn't too sure, you know? You'd, you'd met him before, right? Uh, uh, I mean, prob no. Really? No, this is the wow. first time. Like, when I saw him on the video, I was like, oh, that's him. Mm. That is because him. this whole time I thought it was yeah, Vlad with a video, with an yeah. audio, you know, <laughs> switch or Voice modulator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> his in-person presence is so much more charismatic than his, his online persona. So I know, I know you must have been like, whew, yeah. like wire. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, he just said one word, and I was like, yes. Exactly. Oh, sorry, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. He's great. We did see him. He actually put it. He did my makeup, so you can thank him for that. <laughs> All, right. All right. So um, now talking about um, jobs here at Webflow, um, for engineers who are watching that um, are interested in joining the team, uh, what do you – uh, do you have any tips for them, or what do you look for in candidates uh, who are interested in joining Webflow? Yeah, I mean, I think there are um, a couple big things that I am looking for. Um, you know, team-oriented. Um, you know, we don't go off in silos and do our own thing. We like to work as a team. Um, you can accomplish more as a team than you can as an individual. Um, definitely look for empathy, both um, for their teammates, um, but perhaps even more importantly for the customer. Um, Understanding the customer needs is important. Um, always be focusing on the customer um, is a big thing. Um, I think those are the two big ones that I'm looking at. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, we do look for humility. That's a big one. Um, I think that's probably first and foremost because every, every, humility and self-deprecation a little bit maybe. I don't know because I, <laughs> I kind of make fun of myself. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously. But um, – uh, like p- really passionate problem solvers. I know that sounds kind of whatever, but what like I, I love to chat with someone and ask them questions just to see how they process like thinking through solving a problem. And, and that to me is like a really big deal because you can take a problem solver and basically put them in any context and they'll be able to figure it out. So that's yeah. like, you know, that's a, that's a big uh, quality that I look for. And also incredibly strong communicators. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to be able to solve problems like, you know, like anybody's business, but it's another thing to be able to relay information to another engineer, train another engineer, mentor, coach. Um, I think that's part of that empathy side of things. But yeah. um, being a, a fantastic communicator is essential. So, yeah. 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 Especially when over, I think, uh, over 63% of the team works remotely, mm-hmm. you need to be a great communicator. I mean, you work from uh, Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah, that's a big part of it too, yeah. Yeah, and you're still, and, and you're managing um, the front uh, the front end team, or actually no. The whole team. The whole, the whole team. The whole engineering team. The whole engineering team, and so you, is anyone in your team um, remote? Yeah, they, most of my team is remote. Um, oh. The only person who's not remote is Tommy. Um, oh. So, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it's um, I think there's only like 35 in the office and about yeah. 70 remote, so. Yeah, I think it's 70. Wow. We're at 106 now. Yeah. So. Yeah. so wow, that's yeah. a big jump. Yeah. And man. how many different states and countries? Quite a few. Like around 14 countries? I think so, yeah. 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 And and, yeah. and you guys are still able to manage it and the teams are still able to work together. I think that is a beautiful I, thing. I don't know how to manage it without it being remote. I'd say that remote remote first is, is the reason why we're so successful. That's just my personal huh. thing. Because, um, I, yeah. I, mean, I just actually did a podcast about this probably put that on at some point but okay. about how, yeah how we how we approach remote life here is is uh, um, a real asset to uh, all of our the entire management team just because you can um, really give people the freedom they need the autonomy they need to do the work they need to do but also um, get insight in their day-to-day and, and see what really just really evaluate them on the quality of their output not so much the time they sit in a butt their butt their butts in a seat they sit yeah. in a seat <laughs> <laughs> taking a butt placing a seat we don't measure that <laughs> yeah. yeah and um uh, you know, re- once you get used to the whole remote cadence, that's uh, that's uh, what it comes down to, and it's I think it's just a much easier way of doing it, or better way of doing it. I don't know about easy, but huh. yeah, yeah. I know of one one of our engineers. Uh, she's a digital nomad. I think that lifestyle is is pretty pretty awesome. Like every month, she's in a different country or something, and I'm like, wow, you get to enjoy life, and you're still working on a product that empowers designers. It's I think that's amazing. Absolutely, that there's that, there's that um, work-life balance. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions? Let's see here. I Mark is asking. I'd love to hear more about what processes are in place or technologies that allow your team to be so effective being remote. Ooh, great question, Mark. Uh, I, I'm happy to go for it. Yeah. Um, so I'd say let's talk about the tools or technologies first. We have uh, three major communication channels, which is Slack, mm-hmm. uh, GitHub, and Zoom. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, video conferencing, online chat, and then, of course, code. Uh, and and we pretty much, most of our communications are routed through those various, you know, channels. Um, we do have other ones that we use, but it's more like per team or maybe per, like, someone that they have a specific need. Um, and, you know, I think, and we, we also have a, a remote-first attitude, so down to the process side of things, uh, I'll, I'll give you two things, uh, actually, and, and we should really, the podcast was really great. Okay, really <laughs> we'll, minutes, we'll link it in like the... A, like 45 minutes talking about this exact topic. Okay. But um, on the process side of things, uh, we have a remote first attitude, and that mm-hmm. is the probably the most important quality, and, and that leads to a lot of other processes, Which and what I mean by that is, um, even if you're in the office, you're still sort of expected to communicate through the same channels as if you were remote. Yep. Um, and that really creates... Uh, I don't know, it, it, porting everything through that really forces everyone to empathize with the idea of what being remote is actually like and then allows them to get good at it, which because I think there's certain like muscles you need to exercise when you're when you're uh, when you're, you know, first getting used to being remote. And I will say uh, another thing that's really important is um, yearly retreats. That's yes. kind of processy kind of ish. Um, you know, getting the team together one time a year is I think absolutely critical for a remote first company to uh, succeed. 
Yeah. Uh, and, you know, not to say that you can't get together more often, but, like, you know, just having one really good solid one where everyone gets together is, is all you really need, to be mm -hmm. honest. Because you need time for people to get together face-to-face -to -face and map, you know, the body language of someone else, you know, on, onto, like, the, their mental image. So when they take that online, they can then... Um, they, they map that persona to the, who they're chatting with. Yeah. So they don't make assumptions. That's the other thing is like yeah. sometimes um, when, when you're chatting online, you make an assumption about someone because they don't have any, there's no, like they don't use em, 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 emojis or body mm. language. Yeah. So you interpret it wrong. But once yeah. you know who that person, what that person's like in person, mm. then um, you just map all those things on there and you're, you're much, you, you'll be much more likely to get along with them yeah, or understand sense. them better. Yeah. I mean, our, our, our team uses a lot of emojis, so like we, <laughs> we kind of have some sort of language there. We have over a thousand em custom emojis yeah. now? We have, a, we have a lot of emojis in Slack. <laughs> yes, we have a very expressive Slack. I like, sometimes I'm texting people and I'm very disappointed. Yeah. There's, there's a specific <laughs> emoji from our Slack that I want to use and I don't have it on my phone because it's not Slack. Um, it's a real yeah. problem. Yeah. That's awesome. a thing. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let me take two. Uh, yeah, let's take two or three more questions. Let's see here. Uh, Eric. Oh yeah, for the link to the podcast. Yeah, just if you yeah, can give me the I'll, link I'll, and then I'll we'll put it. it yeah. We'll put it in the description, so you can check it out. And also, we'll tweet it out. It's um, uh, building remote teams, hosted by Jevin. Forget. Ooh, sorry, Jevin. I forgot his last name. <laughs> but uh, just say Jevin. Yeah. And episode five, I think. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Which is okay. So we let's see here. Da, da, da. Okay, so Eric is asking, can you give us a rundown on day to day of a product team? Do you do a daily catch up, and how do you measure productivity? You want to take this one, maybe? Yeah. Um, so we don't have a traditional daily stand up where everybody, in a synchronous fashion, um, gives an update about what they're working on. Um, generally, we have uh, channels called status front end and status back end. Um, where you'll post your daily update of whether or not you're on or off track uh, to complete some task by some date, um, just to keep everybody informed of what's going on. Um, I guess in terms of day-to-day -day work, um, we have weekly or bi-weekly sprint planning meetings or mid-sprint meetings. Um, that is one synchronous meeting a week, not on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to take the second half of the question? About, was the second uh, half? You said... Um, daily catch up and how do you measure productivity? Well, I measure productivity by, you know, what the team's producing. If they're if they're producing, if they're providing value, pushing to production uh, consistently, you know, I think what we want is continuous delivery over deadlines. So we want to make sure that people are constantly pushing and there's nothing getting in their way. Yep. Uh, it's on us to make sure that we remove the bottlenecks from the team so that they can do that consistently. Um, so productivity, it's interesting, that's an interesting question. Um, um, but for us, like from our perspective, it's it's less about measuring their productivity, more about figuring out how to how to make them more, uh, get, allow them to produce more, <laughs> right? So what support systems can we put into place so that they're able to produce at a much higher rate uh, with the same level of energy, right? So mm. it comes back down to that work life thing, um, like stopping time so they can have yeah. 180 hours wormholes. Of, yeah, that's what we need: 180 hour yeah. wormhole days. You guys make wormholes. <laughs> Got it. That was a 10% project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Some pretty <laughs> stellar stuff coming out of our 10% time. Yep. So. There you go. There you go. Uh, Greg uh, is asking, do you have a TQM method, i.e. Kepner, Treg, I don't know this, uh, to measure customer expectations or gaps to process? Improve? I want to ask product about that. I don't I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure. Right. Yeah, that would be product managers? Yeah. We do uh, NPMs, not NPM. We okay. do... Uh, NPS. Thank you. NPS scores. <laughs> NPM on the brain. <laughs> NPS scores and such, but I don't know about that method. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me check one last time on Facebook and we'll move on. Um, let's see here. If no one's on Facebook, let's see here. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, Tom is asking on Facebook, uh, as a new user to Webflow, any suggestions to get started? You know what? Tom? Great segue, because uh, just today, the Webflow education team has launched a teaser or, or a trailer video of what they have been working on for a couple of months now, and it's called The Freelancer's Journey. So we're going to uh, take a look at this uh, trailer. Man, it feels like a late night show or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take a look at this trailer that the education team has made. Have you guys seen it yet? I have. I have. You ha oh, God, yeah. It, it's amazing. It's so great. let's go ahead and take a look. If you haven't seen it yet, 
check it out now and uh yeah we'll be back show don't tell every writer every designer every artist in human history has been taught these three words that's why it's okay that this narration is accompanied by unrelated text about freelance web design it's also why we created the freelancer's journey a free comprehensive course that doesn't just tell you how to build complex layouts it shows each and every step of freelance web design starting from the very beginning and with this new era of video people have been asking will it still be funny yes <laughs> so that's amazing you know, and I was very hyped when I first saw that. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, now the world sees Maguire. Now people can see the the man behind the voice oh, yeah. of all the tutorials. And, yeah, you can sign up at webflow.com slash freelancer. Go and sign up there, and you'll get a link to the, uh, the course once it's out. And this freelancer journey is not just about Webflow. It's not talking about like how to use Webflow in a more advanced way or how to use Webflow in your business. No, it starts from the very, very beginning of how do you get clients? Yeah. You know, that's that's the beginning of every freelancer's journey. And we, the, the team here at Webflow, want to help you build your own business. And we're starting from the very beginning. And with all the engineers, we're helping to support that. Just like how these managers are supporting their team to build for Webflow, and Webflow is supporting you, the designers, to build for the web. And I think it's just an, an amazing thing that we're all doing, you know? And, and for the Webflow community, you're all building great things to, to help your clients and, and streamline the processes for your clients so they can focus on what matters to them most, which is their own business and making sure that they are um, making their own clients happy. So it all works you know, it's a big happy family. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. So um, if you're interested in uh, joining the Webflow engineering team uh, as a back-end engineer or a front-end engineer, go to webflow.com slash jobs. Uh, we have a couple of open positions, but if there is not a position listed, uh, still, you know, uh, you can contact them. Can, can uh, like, what, just go on Twitter and then say, hey, Vlad, hi. <laughs> just just contact Vlad. Yep. <laughs> yeah, contact Vlad. And be like, hi. But yeah, um, go there. Um, thank you so much, Leonard. Yeah, thank you so much, Nathan. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to say to the community before we go? Thanks for being awesome and yeah. building great sites. Can't wait to build more stuff for you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Anything, anything that you can tell the, I know I'm putting you on the spot right now, but <laughs> anything that you're allowed to give to our community right now, like what you're working on. If nothing, if you can't say anything, that's totally fine too. Nothing I'm working on is customer facing at the moment, so. Yeah, I think everything's <laughs> hush hush at the moment. Um, oh, Anna posted the link to the podcast. Perfect. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Um, but yeah, you're keeping us secure in the back end. So exactly. I mean, you know, the SSLs and, and, and whatnot. <laughs> so I mean, thank you so much for keeping everything steady and afloat. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Leonard, for helping the team create awesome features uh, so frequently. And I, I know I speak for the community when I say it's awesome and just keep producing what you guys are doing. Uh, but yeah. Other than that, let's go ahead and close out the stream uh, right there. So if you have any account billing or technical questions or issues, please go to university.webflow.com slash contact and the customer support team will help you out as fast as they can. If you have a design or custom code question, that's when you would go to forum.webflow.com. Join the community there, and someone from the global community will help you with your question. And, and do me a favor. If your question gets answered, pass that favor forward and answer someone else's question so we can all grow together. Uh, you can learn more about our Webflow events. Why is that funny? <laughs> I always say that. No, 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 no you. Oh, OK. Oh, <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> but if you want to join the community in real life, uh, we have a bunch of Webflow meetups happening all over the world. Uh, go to webflow.com slash events to learn more about that. This stream happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So I will see you next Tuesday here, youtube.com slash Webflow. Please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know whenever the education team posts a new video or when we go live. Uh, other socials, uh, Instagram.com slash Webflow, Twitter.com slash Webflow. You can follow me at the Pixel Geek. Do you want to shout out your Twitters? Ye at NM underscore Johnson. JSL author. Cool. Uh, that's it. Thank you all <clears throat> so much. I will see you next Tuesday. And yeah, as always, make the web beautiful. See ya. Cool. Awesome. <laughs>